Okay, so now you know how to move flex items around a flex container. Uh, you do that by keeping track of which direction the main axis is pointing, which direction the cross axis is pointing, and then using justify content or the align items properties to move the flex items around. So now it's time to talk about the flexible nature of Flexbox. In the first screencast, I made a point to note that I'd set a min height and a width on each of the flex items in the example. Uh, and you can see I have that here. And then I said I'd come back to that. So let's talk about that now. Uh, by default, when you set a flex container to be a flex box, the align items is set to uh, stretch. So let's set this to stretch. And that should have no effect on anything because that's the default value. So what that means is it takes the uh, flex items and stretches them vertically, in this case, along the cross axis to take up all of the space. And if the cross axis was pointed horizontally, it would stretch horizontally. So you can see that these items are stretched vertically across the entire window. It doesn't matter how big or small the window is, they stretch. That's what happens when you set align items to stretch. So let's go ahead and set it to start, which should move everything to the top of the screen. So now everything's at the top of the screen. Uh, now, what would happen if these elements uh, didn't have a min height? Uh, let's get rid of it and see what happens. They collapse to nothing. So the reason we need the min height is because these guys are completely empty. They have no content, so they have no natural height. So when I move everything to the beginning and I don't say stretch to take up all the space, they take up no space. So we need to make sure they take up some space. So that's why we have a min height. I'm going to go ahead and set this to just be a height. So we always know they're starting at 100 pixels and the width is always 200 pixels. So now let's talk about other flexible stretchy properties of Flexbox. So I'm going to set the flex property on each of the flex items. I'm going to go ahead and just set it to the default values. So this will have no effect on what we're looking at because these are just the default values. So these three values break out into three different properties. You can set them using this shorthand or you can break them out into these properties like I'm doing here. Uh, the first property is grow and that one's set to zero. The second one is shrink. Let's set the one. And then the third property is the basis, which is set to auto. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this since it's the same thing. Just a shorthand for these three properties. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the shrink property, which is set to one. So each of these boxes is now lined up in a row on the main axis because we've set it to flex and we know that by default it sets it as a row. And so they're sliding across and then we've got the line item set so that way it's at the top, it's at the start of the cross axis. So there we have that. And we also know that we've set the width to 200 pixels. So each of these things is 200 pixels. So what happens when the window is not as wide as it needs to be to fit all 200 pixels for each of these items? And as you can see, each of these items shrinks in order to stay within the window. And that's because we have the shrink value set to one. Uh, if we didn't have a shrink value, so we go from having a shrink value of one to shrink value of nothing, what happens? They all stay the same size and we get a horizontal scroll bar, as you can see down here. So they don't shrink. So if the shrink is set to zero, they don't shrink. Okay, so what does one mean? In this case, one is a unitless number. Uh, it just defines a ratio. So right now, since we've set the same, since we've set shrink to one on every single flex item in this flex box, there's no difference in ratio between the items. But what would happen if I put the shrink value of the header to something higher, like four? So let's see, okay, here are items, they're 200 pixels, now they start to shrink. Oh, and you can see the header is shrinking way faster than the rest of the items. In fact, it's shrinking about four times faster than the other items. So it's a ratio of this number to the rest of them. So you can use this to define all kinds of ways shrinking. And then it turns out grow works exactly the same way. So let's set this to not shrink. So you can see we've got a horizontal scroll bar because we're no longer shrinking. But now, once we get out to enough space for, their, for all these boxes to fit, 
and then we have more space, you can see that now they're growing. They're growing to fill that horizontal space, uh, and they're growing evenly. And so this ends up working, this works exactly the same way as shrink. So if we wanted the header to grow much, much faster, let's say five times as fast, we set it to five, and you can see the header grows much, much faster. And it doesn't shrink. Once it hits 200 pixels, it's stuck at 200 pixels. Uh, so we can go ahead and set this so we can set them both at the same time. So once it gets down to 200 pixels, it'll start shrinking evenly. And once we get past 200 pixels, it starts growing more quickly. It shrinks evenly, grows more quickly. Okay, and so you can see by doing that that we can come up with all kinds of different creative layouts depending on window resolutions. Okay, so now let's look at this basis property. And the basis property is a little bit confusing. So by default, it's set to auto. Personally, I think it's a little easier to understand when it's set to zero. When it's set to zero, that means that it ignores the width and height that we have set on it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, so it's a little less confusing. So it ignores the width and height we set to it, and it means it starts each of these items off as, as if they're nothing. They're completely empty. And then when the browser window loads, it figures out, based on the ratios, how big to make each of the items in order to match the ratios. So in this case, since we have grow set to 1 on all the items, it's always going to be even. So we can see, no matter how much, how big or how small the window is, each of these items is even. So at this size, it grew them all evenly, and at this size, it grows them all evenly. And in fact, when Flexbase is set to 0, shrink is pretty much useless, because they don't have a default size. Their default size is zero. Shrink makes no difference. You can't shrink something smaller than zero. It's always growing. So from here it's growing to fill this space. From here it's growing to fill this space. And from here it's growing to fill this space. The reason it's a little easier to understand this is because uh, it makes your ratios actually work out correctly. So it's a little easier to calculate if you want something more precise. So let me explain. If I want the header to take up exactly half the amount of space, uh, the horizontal space, all I need to do is set this grow property to 3. Now it's going to take up exactly half the amount of space. So that's because there are four items on the page. And so uh, by setting it to 3, I've now got a ratio of uh, 3 to 6. Okay, Because each of these boxes takes up 1, and this one takes up 3. So there are now six, you can visualize six boxes across this screen. This one takes up three, and the other ones each take up one. So one, two, three, one, 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 and this will always take up half the screen, no matter how big, how small the screen is. So it's a little easier to calculate precise ratios when the flex basis is zero. When it's auto, it's a little more complicated with what it's doing. You can see it's not a precise ratio, but it does still grow faster than the other ones, right? but not at exactly the rate that you're saying. So what it's doing is it's adding spacing around the base size of the box. So in this case, the base width is 200 pixels. So once you get past it, it starts adding pixels. It starts adding the extra spacing evenly around the 200 pixel boxes. So around here. So instead of just making these boxes all making the dividing the spacing evenly along all the boxes, it's dividing the spacing along the space remaining. So it's pretty confusing. I'll send a, I'll put a link in the uh, in either the chapter or in the cheat sheet so you can try to wrap your head around it. But I think it's okay to think about it like this. If you want to get precise ratios, set this guy to zero and only mess with grow. Uh, if you don't care about precise ratios, it's okay to set this to auto and just know that this is going to be mm, about three times faster. Okay, so that about does it for the shrink and grow properties of Flexbox. Uh, in the next screencast, I'm going to go through an actual example of a common layout so you can see how to use these to your advantage and a few other odds and ends of Flexbox.